Good Shabbos, everybody. It's good to see everyone this morning. That reminds me, one second. Yeah. I'll take this off right here. Do you have a portable? Oh, even better. Wait until we have to. Yeah, great. So there's a study sheet coming around for everyone. Can everyone hear me on this mic? It's okay. All right, it's great to see everyone here. What I want to talk about this morning is the 10th commandment. You shall not covet. This commandment is very unique amongst all the commandments we find in the 10 commandments. It reads, of course, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female slave or his ox or his ass or anything that is your neighbor's. You shall not covet. Now, one, of course, would be for obvious reasons. If you covet for something, if you're constantly jealous about something someone else has, it may lead you to do something wrong, to break another commandment. As the Italian commentator Sophorna tells us, once you begin to covet something belonging to someone else, it is only a short step to committing robbery. Of course, right? You covet something so long that you're finally led to do something. But the rabbis also are challenged by this. Maybe coveting in and of itself, even if it doesn't lead you to do something else, maybe coveting in and of itself is not okay. Maybe there's a reason why God gave us this commandment, not just because we may do something else, but it may cause us to lead lives that God doesn't want us to live. Perhaps, it will also destroy our chance for any happiness. Think about our own lives. If we're constantly jealous of other people, people at work, in the neighborhood, people in the community, it's very hard to appreciate the blessings that we do have if we're constantly comparing ourselves to others in seeking what they have. For example, let's read box number three. Would someone like to read box number three for me? Aaron, and let me give you this mic so the people at home can also hear. Destroys our chances for happiness. Rabbi Shai held coveting, craving, and being free, dismissing what he sees as a destructive notion that Judaism cares only about what we do but not about what we think or feel. Ibn Ezra insists radically that the main purpose of the, all the commandments is to strengthen the heart, strengthen the heart. This is evident from the fact that we distinguish between one who sinned intentionally and one who sinned in error, from the commentary to Deuteronomy 5. The danger, in other words, is not just where covetousness can lead, but what covetousness itself represents. The Torah cares deeply about our inner lives. Character matters. The Torah cares. The Torah cares. God cares about what we feel inside. And Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel has something very important to say about this idea as well from his great work, The Sabbath. Would someone like to read box number four? Mary, do you want to read it? Okay, here, let me give you this mic, though, so people at home can hear you. Nothing is as hard to suppress as the will to be a slave to one's own pettiness. Gallantly, ceaselessly, quietly, man must fight for inner liberty. Inner liberty depends upon being exempt from domination of things as well as from domination of people. There are many who have acquired a high degree of political and social liberty, but only very few are not enslaved to things. This is our constant problem how to live with people and remain free, how to live with things and remain independent. In a moment of eternity, while the taste of redemption was still fresh to the former slaves, the people of Israel were given the 10 words, the 10 commandments. In its beginning and end, the dialogue deals with the liberty of man. The first word, I am the Lord, 
thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, reminds him that his outer liberty was given to him by God and the tenth word, thou shalt not com covet, reminds him that he himself must achieve his inner liberty. Thank you, Mary, and beautiful. Right, God can give us freedom as he gave our ancestors freedom in the land of Egypt, but we ourselves can only give ourselves the inner liberty, the inner liberty to be happy, the inner liberty to not be jealous of what other people have. And as we turn the page, a very important reminder to us, as Proverbs tells us, a calm disposition gives bodily health and envy rots the bones. Envy rots the bones. And to lead us to do things like we see in example number six, a good example of what may happen if we allow envy to eat us up inside. There's a medieval folktale that highlights the self-destructive nature of envy. A king promised a man anything he wanted on condition that the man's neighbor, whom he envied, would receive double. Instead of being pleased by this extraordinary offer, the man, obsessed and disheartened by his neighbor's even greater good fortune, asked the king to pluck out one of his own eyes, just so that his neighbor would lose both. I'd hate to live next door to that guy. <laughs> but how often do we do the same? We don't pluck our own eyes out, but we're constantly jealous of what someone else may have. And if we think about it for just a moment, God would have only given us this commandment if God knew that people were naturally envious of others. It's the only emotion outlawed by the Ten Commandments. There's a reason why we have a commandment here. And no matter how much we all work on our own inner freedom, our own inner spiritual being, we're still going to find envious as part of human nature. And therefore, I want to add box number seven, ways to reduce our envy. It's something I hope we can all constantly work on. I work on. All of us as Jews need to constantly be working on. And I get this from the great work, A Code of Jewish Ethics, one that I highly recommend. Rabbi Joseph Telushkin put out The Code of Jewish Ethics about a decade ago. And he takes many, of hu many human emotions, like envy, and outlines ways in which we can work on reducing those, the negative attributes like envy. The first piece of advice, a man envies everyone except his son and his disciple. And the, the rabbis of the Talmud tell us this. In this day and age, I would say our children and our students, and even if we're not teachers, those that we've tutored, those that we've helped in the office, at work, in our social lives, in our communal lives. Why? We help them. We're invested in our children or our students. We want them to succeed. No one's ever jealous of their child or a student. Can we try to help others as well? Can we see other people in our lives and give them opportunities and help them succeed? Can we become invested in their success so that then we, they succeed we're not jealous, but we're happy for them. Advice number two from the great Rabbi Nachman of Bratislav. He says, don't look at the person whom you envy with an evil eye, rather with an eye in tow, a good eye. Appreciate their good actions. See their blessings as deserved. When you see other people who may be more successful than you are, may live in a bigger house, drive a nicer car, may have more money than you have, don't look at them with an evil eye. Don't look for the negative things about them. Look at them with a generous eye, a good eye. See that there are some blessings that they do deserve. Look at the world itself with a good eye. Moses is a great example. In the book of Bamidbar, we'll read in a few months, the people come alarmed to Moses and yell to Moses, look, there are other people that are also speaking words of God. They're also acting like prophets. Moses doesn't do something harsh. He doesn't punish those people. Moses says, it's okay. They too can speak words of God. Moses doesn't see what they're doing to provoke him to be jealous. Rather, Moses says, you know what, it's okay. Other people can have this blessing as well. Advice number three. This is Rabbi Joseph Telushkin's mother. The only people I know who are happy are people I don't know well. 
How true is that? Would you accept their problems as well? We may think someone has the perfect life. Their children are so perfect. Their house is so beautiful. Their job seems to be so easy and they're making twice as much as I am. But they have problems as well, I assure you. It reminds me of the old story. A congregation was offered the following. Everyone could take all of their problems, any problem you have, put it in a bag and drop off the problems at the synagogue. Sounds like a pretty good deal. But there was one catch. You had to pick up someone else's bag of problems and take on their challenges. Would we do it? Probably not. Everyone has their challenges. Everyone has their problems. No one lives the perfect life. Let us remember that to reduce our envy. Number four from Dr. Solomon Schimmel. Compare yourself with those less fortunate than yourself rather than with those more fortunate. How blessed we are as Americans living in 2019. We have our challenges. We certainly have our struggles. But living in this day and age in this country, we're more blessed and more fortunate than 95% of the human race. Probably more than that. We have basic comforts and blessings that most people in this world will never even imagine. Living today, should we really be so envious of others? Let us count our blessings as another way to reduce envy. And finally, number five, instead of allowing yourself to wallow in self-pity, consider whether there is something you can learn from the more successful person that might improve your life. If you're constantly finding yourself envious of someone else, ask yourself, is there something they're doing that I could be doing? Maybe instead of being so jealous of them, I can learn from them so that I too can be successful. Use it as a learning opportunity, a way to challenge yourself, a way to better yourself. Yes, there is a reason why God gives us this very unique 10th commandment, the only emotion outlawed amongst the 10 commandments. Do not covet your neighbor for our own spiritual happiness. In fact, the rabbis say, one of great Hasidic rabbis says that there's a reason this is the 10th commandment. If we follow the other nine commandments, he sees the 10th commandment as a promise or even a reward. By following the other commandments, we won't have to be covetous of other people. We won't have to be jealous. If we live godly lives, righteous lives, if we try to follow the other commandments, then there will be nothing to be jealous of other people. We'll feel satisfied with what we have, happy inside, happy then for other people. Shabbat Shalom, everybody.